Hello, are you preparing for the Praxis Elementary Science exam? My name is Derek Masiaga, I'm with Study.com, and I'm going to help walk you through some general science questions in this video. Let's get started. Problem 1. Which of the following resources would be most reliable when researching the latest scientific findings on climate change? A. A science textbook from five years ago. B. The website of a well-known environmental nonprofit organization. C. A peer-reviewed scientific journal article from this year. Or D. A recent documentary film on climate change. So looking back at the problem, they're highlighting two things that we need to know. Which one is going to be most reliable? And we want to know the latest scientific findings. So the correct answer here is going to be choice C, a peer-reviewed scientific journal article from this year. And the reason for that is that the definition of peer-reviewed scientific journal means that other scientists have read the article and have either researched it themselves or have duplicated the findings themselves. So that's what peer-reviewed means. We know that it's reliable because other scientists have taken a look at it, and it tells us that the article is from this year, and so that's going to give us the other requirement that it's the latest scientific findings. All of the other options, A, B, or D, either only hit on one of those, They're, they have the latest scientific findings, but they don't have the most reliable information, or they don't have the latest scientific findings. And that is why uh, choice C is the correct answer. Okay, problem two. If a student is observing a plant growing over a course of several weeks and recording the height of the plant each day, which of the following is the student doing during the gathering data step of scientific inquiry? Is it A, predicting how tall the plant will be at the end of the observation period? B, forming a hypothesis about the rate of the plant's growth? C, measuring and recording the height of the plant each day, or D, drawing conclusions about the plant's growth based on the recorded data. So once again, what is the, the question asking? It's, it's saying which of the following is the student doing during the gathering data step? And so our correct answer here is going to be choice C, measuring and recording the plant height each day. And so once again, our, our key terms here is that we're measuring and recording. That is a form of gathering data. Option A is making a prediction. Option B is forming a hypothesis. And option D is drawing conclusions. Those are all different steps of the scientific method, whereas option C is specifically the gathering data step. Question three. When using a microscope to view a sample, which piece of equipment adjusts the amount of light that reaches the sample? A, the eyepiece, B, the objective lens, C, the diaphragm, or D, the revolving nose piece? Okay, and the correct answer here is going to be letter C. And if even if we didn't know that, we could probably, through process of elimination, kind of work our way to that answer. So like option A, the eyepiece. The eyepiece is just, that's the piece where we are looking into the microscope. It's literally where the eye is looking into, hence why it's called the eyepiece. Option B is the objective lens. The lens is the portion of the microscope that is actually magnifying the image. And then D, the revolving nose piece, that's the that's the piece of the microscope that is revolving. Usually there's like three lenses on a microscope. That's just the part that um, switches out the lens magnification type. And so even if we didn't know it was the diaphragm, we could probably through process of, <clears throat> of elimination say that it was the diaphragm. Okay, finally, question four. In a professional laboratory setting, which of the following would be an appropriate safety measure when handling chemicals? A, keeping food and drinks on a separate table in the lab. B, working alone to maintain concentration. C, wearing protective clothing such as lab coats and safety goggles. Or D, relying solely on previous knowledge and ignoring safety data sheets. Well, obviously we're gonna eliminate option D where it's telling us to ignore safety data. That's not correct. We're gonna eliminate option B, working alone 
that's not a good option. In case something were to happen, there would be no one there to help you. And so it's between A and C. And I know it's not option A because we should never have food or drinks in the lab setting. So it's even though it's telling us that the food and drinks are on a separate table, it's telling us that it's on a separate table in the lab. We should not have any food or drinks at all in the lab. And so C, even though it kind of seems pretty obvious, wearing protective clothing such as lab coats and safety goggles is the most appropriate way to be safe in the lab. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos, and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis Test Prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we wanna hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.